Thank you for clicking on the video. Uh, in this episode of Nostalgia Corner, I'm going to continue with my video game uh, thoughts. And today I'm going to talk about the Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic video games for the original Xbox. Okay, so in today's episode, I'm going to talk about Star Wars uh, Knights of the Old Republic, and I'm going to group them both together instead of talking about each one individually, because my memories of these games are really linked together uh, with the two games uh, at the same time. So this is continuing along from my last Nostalgia Corner video, which talked about Sid Meier's Pirates. Um, this is the next set of games kind of following that line uh, of, you know, nostalgia around that time period about talking about my dad getting into what would have been modern video gaming at the time and kind of starting up a, you know, kind of connection with me over that. And like I said, that started first with Sid Meier's Pirates. And then following that, uh, these two games here, uh, were the next step in line from that. These are great games for what they are. Uh, they're great if you're a Star Wars fan. They're great if you're a role-playing RPG uh, game fan, you know. Uh, the level of customization that you would have over your characters was something that I hadn't really experienced in a game on that series of consoles, the PlayStation 2, you know, OG Xbox uh, timeframe. The story was great on these games and a bunch of, you know, other things, just how much you could interact and, you know, talk with the different characters and side quests and all this stuff. And it was really kind of a new thing for me at that time. I, I had never really uh, gotten into an RPG game like like that and I had always played action adventure games if they had RPG kind of elements to them it was still basically an action adventure traditional console style game it wasn't an, an actual genuine RPG kind of game and these were the first two games that I ever played that introduced me into that style of gameplay you know, you would have your buffs and your attributes and your level of character and the enemies would be a certain level with their buffs and attributes and stuff. And then you would click an action uh, to perform and you would get kind of like an outcome based on what would be a dice roll of putting all these factors together that the actual game does in the background. And so all the animations of whether you were successful or unsuccessful or a neutral outcome uh, would all be done in the background and then you would see the animation play out. And that was kind of weird for me, like I said, because I was used to playing games where you controlled your character and did everything by hand, you know, with the controller yourself. And so that was new to me. But then once I got used to it, I really enjoyed it. You know, it turned out to be a pretty cool feature and became something that I was able to kind of just do and like without too much uh, thought really into it after a certain point, especially after I had played these games multiple times and like beat them and would redo them to try to like to get the different endings and different, you know, uh, outcomes to things because you can be a good guy, you know, on the Jedi side, you could be a bad guy on the Sith side, you could be somewhere in the middle, all your choices you made would kind of play out in different ways. So, you know, I, I would replay the game multiple times and I, it just became kind of second nature on how to do everything. The customization was really cool because you could customize the outfits and customize your lightsaber with all the different lightsaber colors. You could have a single lightsaber. You could have two lightsabers. You could do the double ended lightsaber, you know, like Darth Maul had in The Phantom Menace. You could uh, change your outfit in appearance and your your force powers. You could use, 
like good Jedi style force powers or you could do evil force powers from the Sith. So you could be a good guy and still use force choke on somebody or you could be a bad guy and use, you know, like the healing power and stuff that was associated with the Jedi side of things. And it was just really cool. And you had all these companions and everything that you could, you know, kind of customize and they would change just more so in the second game but they would like change their affiliation along with you so if you were more of a good guy your companions would start to act more like a good guy uh if you were more of a bad guy then they would start to take on more like bad guy traits or some people who were more heavily aligned to one side or the other would be more apt to want to work with you if you were bad, if they were a bad guy. But if you were good, they'd be less likely to want to help you with stuff or they would like scold you for things and vice versa, you know, with that. So it was really cool. Just the game and everything uh, with all that was just really, really cool and really uh, new to me at that point in time uh, in the early 2000s. And the reason I'm grouping these together, like I said in the beginning, is the first Knights of the Old Republic came out in 2003. The sequel came out in 2004. And as I stated in my Sid Meier's Pirates video, we had a Hollywood video uh, game crazy store nearest to our house. And that's where we would rent videos from. And that's where I had a membership and where I did most of my video game purchases and trade-ins and stuff at. And I bought the original... Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic towards the end of its life cycle before the sequel had released. It had been announced, but it, you know, hadn't been released yet. And so I got it on clearance, you know, for like 20 or $25 at that time and played it and really enjoyed it. And subsequently my dad really enjoyed it, which I'll get to in a little bit here. And I pre-ordered the sequel, which is the first game I ever pre-ordered, as well as the first game I ever bought the strategy guide for, which was Knights of the Old Republic 2. And in that span of like a year there from 2003 through 2004, I kind of can join these games together because I played one and then immediately went into the second game when it got released because I pre-ordered it. But the storyline does cross over from one game to the other. So from the first game to the second game, it does cross over. And, you know, so it kind of just blends together as one big game for me. So, you know, the gameplay was cool and all that sort of stuff was really neat and uh, new to me at that point in time. Uh, but then my second point of nostalgia that I have with these, these were the first two sources of media that introduced me into a you know into the expanded universe of star wars you know my dad and i were both star wars fans i enjoyed the movies growing up my dad you know was younger uh you know he he was like i don't know early 20s or whatever when the original star wars came out in the 70s and then into the 80s when the sequels came out and uh so he had a little bit different uh, association with it than I did because I only remember watching the VHS tapes growing up but I only knew Star Wars as the original trilogy of movies and then by the time these came out the prequels had just come out uh, well I think two of the three I don't think Revenge of the Sith had come out yet so I kind of knew just of what the movies were about I knew that there were books like novels I knew there had been some uh, comic books throughout the years like I knew they existed but I never really read any of them or you know did much digging into the expanded universe and of course this is kind of before the internet blew up into what it is now so I'm sure there was info out there that you could find but I had never looked it up you know so I didn't really know much about the expanded universe other than there was stuff out there so when I played these games because this is in the old republic before all the movies take place it opened up a whole new world to me and little references that kind of you would hear about different stuff in the movies were more fleshed out in these games and so it opened up everything for the expanded universe for me you know and then these games of course parlay into the star wars online with the old republic which i never played and i can't really talk about but you know 
it, this opened up a whole new kind of realm for me and I ended up reading some of the comic books and stuff that I found you know at like comic book stores and whatever based around this timeline you know and it did that for my dad too because like I said my dad knew about books and comic books being out there but he never read any of them so this opened up a whole new thing for him as well which then leads me into the final aspect, which is one of the big reasons I had nostalgia about the last game that I talked about with, with Pirates, is that the Pirates game started my dad getting into modern gaming at that time in the early 2000s. And immediately following that, we got the first Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, and my dad was a little, little hesitant to play the game because he wasn't sure he'd be able to actually like get used to the controls and everything but when I explained to him that you know it's not a traditional game you basically just create your character and you can change your attributes and all this stuff but you basically just pick button options and the computer does it for you you don't have to actually fight with your lightsabers and you don't have to actually use the controller to use your force powers you can just click a button and then the outcome will happen and my dad really took to that because he was afraid he wouldn't have the dexterity in his hands and stuff to actually play an action game. So uh, he picked it up and started playing it, and I kind of coached him through a little bit on this first game. And my dad took to it, and my dad to this day lo still loves these games. And he played the first one over and over, and eventually what had happened, because... Same thing as how I talked about in my Pirates video. I was in school at that time, in uh, high school. So I would play after I got home from school or on weekends when my dad was at work. And then when my dad would come home in the evenings, he would go and play with his character. And I would kind of coach him along with stuff and let him know he would follow kind of a similar path to how I would go. And I could kind of help him with stuff because if he got puzzled with something or got upset because he couldn't beat an enemy or something, I would kind of like help give him hints and coach him along with it. And that started with the first game and then went into the second game. But what's funny is, like I said, I've only ever pre-ordered a handful of games in my life. And Knights of the Old Republic 2 was the very first game I ever pre-ordered. And that's because my dad really wanted to play it. Because he had played the first one and beat it like two times or whatever. Once is a good guy, once is a bad guy. And at that point in time, I was getting Game Informer magazines. And they did a article, you know, a you know, special edition magazine. It was the primary story about the sequel. And so my dad read the magazine, read the entire article about it. And he put down half the money and I put down half the money to pre-order the second game. And he also pre-ordered the strategy guide for it, which I had never purchased the strategy guide before, <laughs> before that. And we went there midnight release, me and my dad in 2004 went to game crazy and picked it up. I got the game, got the strategy guide and started playing it immediately. And I let my dad start his character first. And then I did mine the next day. But my dad, again, took to that game just like that, and he didn't really even need all that much help. And he had the strategy guide that he would read periodically, you know, with stuff and kind of get tips and tricks about doing things. And I thought I still own that strategy guide. I think it's somewhere, but I can't find it because my dad had handwritten notes on sticky notes that he put in the strategy guide for different things that he had, like, figured out that he wanted to add to it and everything. And... My dad played more so the second one than the first, but both of these games. My dad played that second Star Wars uh, Knights of the Old Republic so many times. He, he beat it with every possible outcome you could get. He knew everything by heart by the end of it. He was playing that on the 360 so many years later because it was backwards compatible. And my dad became a creature of habit. He had a handful of like three or four games that he really liked playing, and that's all he would play between the original Xbox and the 360. <laughs> Even when he had a 360, he would still play these backwards compatible games. And my dad played that game so much. He, he logged so many hours, even more than me, because eventually I played these and I had the replayability. And then because I was a teenager, 
I would get on to other things, you know, and eventually my interest would change and I'd want to play a new game that would come out or whatever. But my dad just, on these games especially, was just sucked into it and just constantly would play these games over and over and over and over. Uh, to the point that, I mean, up until a handful of years ago, when my dad's arthritis and stuff got so bad he couldn't really use the controllers anymore, uh, was still playing these games on an old Xbox 360 in my parents' living room. I mean, it just constant. My dad just loved these games. And that's a lot of the reasons why I have the fondness for these games. I mean, I enjoyed them, they're great games. They're still backwards compatible now on the modern Xbox system. So if you can find the disc version or every once in a while they sell them in the online store on sale, it's definitely worth picking up. You know, they're fun for what they are and really some of the best Star Wars games of the modern generation of stuff that's out there. Uh, but it just my dad loved it so much. And that's why I have such fond memories is sitting there and coaching him along. And we would talk about different stuff and reading through the strategy guide about things. And, you know, then as I got older, just seeing my dad replay and replay and replay and replay these games, you know, uh, over and over and over again, you know, and it just gave me so much joy that my dad still has, these aren't the original copies. My dad at home still has the original copies that I bought of these games. And uh, they're sitting, you know, on his DVD shelf at home uh, where these are ones that I bought later on secondhand. But again, the, this whole time period, which my next Nostalgia Corner video will probably be about the third game that kind of falls in line with this series of games of that early to mid 2000s period where me and my dad played a lot of games together. And like I said, Sid Meier's Pirates, then the, these two games, and then on to the next one, which will be in the next video I do. Uh, it just gives me a lot of fond memories, you know, and joyful stuff to think about of how I was able to like coach my dad through there. And then to the point where my dad became an expert on these games and he was telling me stuff that I didn't even know you could do because I didn't spend as much time exploring all the options as he did, you know? So it just, you know, it, it's just a lot of like good, you know, memories for me around this time. So anyway, so yeah, that's going to be about these two games. Like I said, if you can find the physical copies for the Xbox uh, or buy it on the store, they're still backwards compatible today on the modern Xbox, you know, Xbox one or series X or series S you know, versions. So definitely worth picking up. They're, they're great games for what they are. You know, they're a little outdated compared to modern, you know, AAA games today. But, you know, they're really, the core gameplay and stuff is really good. You know, and the storyline and stuff is really good. So uh, that's going to wrap it up for these. Uh, so I just want to, again, shout out everybody that's uh, liked and subscribed to my channel. Uh, I'm completely blown away by everything. Um, and my last check, uh, you know, which, which will date this video a little bit. Um, my end game speaker video is over a thousand views. Uh, that's insane to me. Uh, uh, really insane to me that one of my videos would have that many views and it's still going up. Uh, I'm over 70 subscribers. Like I'm getting close to a hundred subscribers. I never thought I would be anywhere close to that. Uh, so uh, that's, you know, great. And some of the guys, you know, in the AVS forum found my, my channel and, you know, kind of shouted me out in there to the other other guys in that forum. And that's, you know, crazy to me that my reach would spread kind of like to that kind of corner of the Internet. So I just want to say thanks again to everybody who's watched my videos and liked any of my videos, the comments. I've had a chance to chat with a bunch of people out there already. You know, it, it's just great and kind of humbling to me that people would actually be that interested in my stuff, you know, especially since I've only been doing this at this point in time. This is middle of April here in 2024 for like four months, you know, so to have even that level of uh, viewership and interaction is, is just mind blowing to me. So, uh, again, I just want to say thanks to everybody. And I'm filming some more content, trying to get things moved out when, when I can onto the, the timeline here. So be on the lookout for some more videos uh, in the works and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.